So we have two speakers with us today. And um, first I'll introduce Kitty Chelton. She has a private practice in somatic psychology in Sebastopol and is a somatics trainer at Lomi Psychotherapy Clinic. Um, she's trained and supervised therapists in body-oriented therapies for 20 plus years. And uh, she leads counter-transference consultation groups for interns, licensed therapists, and body workers. She supports practitioners in expanding beyond their perceived limitations, empowering them to be more creative and authentic. That sounds awesome, doesn't it? <laughs> and then um, we have Teresa um, Belden. Is that... Okay, great. Um, Teresa is a certified body dynamic analyst, teacher, and trainer. Um, originally a Reiki and body worker, teacher, and masseuse, Teresa worked for Crichton Cancer Center and the STEPS Center, um, which specializes in working with those with HIV and AIDS. Presently, she divides her time between private practices in Berkeley and Sebastopol, and Teresa has taught body dynamic psychotherapy in California and Canada, and has specialized in working somatically with individuals and groups for 20 plus years. So we've got a lot of experience here today. Thank you. So did you bring the big body knot thing? No. Did you want me to? I, I can't. You were gonna do I it. can't believe you didn't bring it. Oh, you're always disappointing me. I knew it. You don't like me. I knew it all along. I, I, I've had it. We're not doing this. <laughs> Sound familiar? <laughs> so that was April Fools, but <laughs> it's also a, a demonstration of how the body knot gets started, and. Um, we use the body knot to help unravel those kinds of messes that people get into. Um, we use it with couples, in groups, with individuals. It's particularly helpful with people who have, are extremely reactive, borderline personality disorder gets a lot out of this, but anybody who's got trauma responses can really be helped by the body knot. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I would just say that we use it with our children. We use it with our children as well. Um, we use it with our own spouses and family members as well. And we're hoping that we can give you in a very short period of time enough information to take this out and play with it um, with your own, in your own life, with your clients. And we do a training that's a day long. So to have an hour and a half is a very short period of time to share this. But we'll do what we can do today. So just to elaborate on that, um, we are going to take you through each of the steps and explain them. Then we're going to focus on just the first few steps of the body knot because we can't teach you the whole thing in an hour and a half. So do you want to start with that? Yeah. We had a couple of requests that people would love to be able to see easier. If we stand up. <laughs> A lot closer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, don't go too far. <laughs> so let's start with the beginning. Do you want to go? Yeah, the context. The context is the most important part that we try to teach people. And that's whatever has happened before this event. Use the example we gave you. All, we work together. We, I have a context about whether or not I can um, really trust people. It may have nothing to do with Kitty, but it's something that I'm very sensitive to and I'm always looking for in all my relationships. So I'm always going to be sensitive and disappointed if someone does something that's upsetting to me, right? So we always, when we do the body knot with people, we have them sit or stand on the context. And what I mean by that is we have these divided out. We gave you each a copy. And so the context is the first one. And if somebody came in with an issue like we just described, I'd have to stand on my context when I talk to her when she talks back to me, she has to stand on hers. So we try to take, make people responsible for their own context in any interaction. Make sense? 
Okay. And this is any past experiences that help you make meaning of things. So it could be family of origin, usually that's in there for sure. But what we also run into, and I notice this with couples a lot, if you have couples that have been together a long time, they have a context with each other. And they come in, maybe they've been together 20 years and they want to change how they're doing things, but if they keep assuming the same things, if they keep drawing on the original context with each other, then they can't change it. They can't allow it to change because they keep seeing things the same way. So this helps with that. Yeah. Any questions on that? Um, one thing we did want to say is we gave you the handout so you'll have a copy of the body knot you can look at later. Um, we would like to ask that you're not worried about leafing through those handouts while we're working because you'll get a lot more out of it if you're here. Okay, next. Okay. So the next is the facts. I don't know how well you guys can see this. It's the top one. It's the facts of what happened. And the facts in our example was that we were supposed to bring the body knot, okay? Did I bring the body knot was the facts. <laughs> and the facts were, no, I didn't. And then it immediately escalated from there. Do you see? Okay. So the first thing we try to do when a couple is having a problem or an individual who comes in says she's having a problem or he's having a problem with their partner or a friend is have them divide that into the facts. What really happened? Not what you imagine happened, but what really happened. Make sense again? Okay. So it's anything that you saw, heard, you know, smelled. <laughs> Um, anything that actually happened. So it might even be, you know, I saw that expression on your face. That actually happened. That was a fact. There was an expression. Where I go with it is a different thing. Right? Matter of fact, because we're somatic therapists, we almost always see that it's words, but it's also body language. People are always looking for body language, and they're making stories up about their body language. Okay? So the third part then, we can go to that, is a very important piece, which is what you make of the facts, what you make of the body language. And we call that fantasy, imagination, perception, whatever you're comfortable Assumption. with. Assumption. Assumption. And we find that most people get so tied up right here, that's partly why we call it a knot, <laughs> that they will come in and they'll say, well, you did such and such, and my feelings are blah, blah, because I know what you meant. They don't divide the difference between their assumption or the, their imagination and what actually happened. They don't ask, what did you mean by that? Like if we, draw, if we broke our little interaction up, what did she mean by not bringing the body knot? You know, what did she mean by thinking I would? Slow everything down. We're all about slowing everything down, keeping people just where they are instead of escalating and jumping ahead. So we're separating these two. To me, the most imp important part, you can see there's a lot more components, but the most important part of the body knot is separating these two. You know, because people will say, you know, well, what happened was you gave me a dirty look. <laughs> all right? The assumption is in that. So we want to, if we can separate that, which is the hardest part because <laughs> I work with couples a lot and it's no, he did. He gave me a dirty look. No, I know what I know because I know him and I've known him a long time. It's like then we're back to the context, right? We have to be willing to separate that and people fight it hard because we want to know what we know, right? So when we're teaching it, we even explain to people that what I perceive as a smile might not be a smile at all. Or it might not be a welcome smile. Maybe it's a fear smile. Maybe it's a judgment smile. And so we really work at that level to figure out what's really going on versus what you're fantasizing or imagining. Okay. And that's the piece we're going to work on later today just to really work that.
Am I breathing too loud into that? (laughs) The next piece really kind of go together, which is your inner sensing, what happens in your body when you make up this imagination of what the other person meant and your emotions. And so when we're working with people, we're always getting them to go back to what their imagination is and go and make their feelings and body sensations separate. People don't like to do that. Does that make sense? Can you see how that works? Okay. And for me, especially when I'm first teaching this, especially with a couple who's heated or whatever, is um, if I can get them to name a body sensation or name an emotion, (laughs) I'm happy. Uh, I'm not going to get too nitpicky with them, but when we do start slowing it down more, you were angry. What did you notice in your body? We want to go for the sensation. Okay, so the next piece, which is extremely important, is what you do with your imagination or your interpretation. And most people either move towards the person, either with anger or with love, affection, because you can have a positive imagination here, or they freeze or they withdraw. And so the big problem in most relationships is people either misinterpret and then they either move towards quickly or they withdraw. They don't sit still, ask, what did you mean by that? Sense their own body and become more grounded and comfortable in themselves. They jump very quickly. And then from that place of jumping either with withdrawing or um, moving towards, they don't analyze the consequences of what's going on. This could be true even at work. They don't make a real choice or decision. They go from impulse toward action right into the action. And then they're in a mess. (laughs) You saw in our very quick example, I just got up. I was ready to leave. And that happens with many couples Many, even your clients will do that. You'll hurt their feelings. They don't know why you said what you said. They imagine they know, and they're ready to walk out and never come back or be mad, right? So this is why it's such a critical piece to try to get people to understand in their bodies, not just in their mind. And the moving toward can be trying to make up, but it, as you know, can be attackative. So um, the wave type or the angry resistant type attachment style will go after the person. Um, so you just name the rest. Yeah. I'm going to put them out. You'll have a copy of each one of these. It, it looks like a lot, but when you actually start working it and when we have time to have you work it, you'll understand it. Do we have any questions so far? Yes. I don't know if a question as much as an observation um, that sometimes what the person perceives is actually going on. Mm-hmm. So it's not always. Fantastic. This is a good question because this is. She asked. Because sometimes their partner did give them a dirty Right. Partner. But it's so still a fantasy until you find out if it's true. You have to check it out. Uh, certainly, but, mm-hmm. but if, if I perceive that my partner is giving me some kind of communication, now mm-hmm. I may label it dirty look, but there's something that the other person is sending to me that now I might not perceive correctly what right. that is. Right. But it could be that I am correct. That's right. It is a dirty look. Can everybody hear her question? All right, she's saying that at sometimes what you perceive is actually happening, that you might, your partner might give you a dirty look, and it is a dirty look because they're mad, right? Um, And so sometimes it's true, and that is absolutely correct. And I have a lot of people bring up that that argument, but what, what we're after here is not to assume that your perception is correct. And this is where the big problem comes in in communication is we assume we're correct and we don't check it out. I just saw a look on your face and I'm imagining or perceiving that you're giving me a dirty look, that you're mad at me right now. 
then your partner has a chance to say, yeah, you're right, I am, or no, that wasn't what I meant by that. It creates more space. And what I've actually found is that when people do check it out, even if they're right, somehow it works better because you've just made room for two people here. You haven't just decided how it is and told your partner how it is. You've asked them and made room for them. So even if it's true, they can stay in more of a heart space together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Isn't it true that, that the body doesn't lie, but the body can lie with their words? So sometimes <laughs> you don't trust yourself, and you say, you gave me a dirty look, and they say, well, no, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. Well, it has to be a lie, and the body is telling the truth. I don't know. I, I'd Can, like to respond. Yeah, but you to need to tell them what the question is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you hear the question? Okay. Okay, the, the question is that she's saying maybe the, possibly the body doesn't lie. She's been told that. So if you say to your partner, you just gave me a dirty look, and they say, no, I didn't. Well, then I, you, why would you believe that? And I would say that the body doesn't lie, but it doesn't tell the truth that you think it's telling. <laughs> In other words, somebody who is frightened when they're confronted might have a strange look on their face to you, but that doesn't mean that they are lying or that they're judging you. They might be afraid. And the look on their face to you looks like they're judging you. So let's go back to the context that we said is so important. That's why that's so important. If I had a very judgmental father who looked a particular way, when I see someone else that I love look that particular way, I'm going to interpret it that I'm being judged. And that's very dangerous for relationship. Uh huh. That the same token, that person can also be angry at themselves, or it can also be an anger, uh, an anger face of pain. Exactly. It can be Could many, be anything. many different anger faces. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the context. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good idea. So you're saying that the context is foundational, and this is what it looks like. Yeah. So I'm curious if you can say anything more about how you help people understand the context. I can imagine a lot of times they don't see their own context. Mm -hmm. That could be months. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to respond or you want me to? Go ahead. Um, that's what the body knot's all about, is we want to first get the pieces broken down and then help people come back. Once we get people into their feeling place, you know, it's like when you assume that, what do you feel? Then we can ask, how does that relate to your context? When have you felt that way before? And um, you can work them down into explaining what happened. And, and in doing that, people learn to see, oh, this is what, this is what I carry with me. Um, I wanted to mention that on the handouts, we accidentally gave a piece of paper that we didn't <laughs> intend to. <laughs> um, it says wound, core wound and core decision on it. And that is a deeper piece of work. It's a, it's a piece of training we do. We usually slip it under the context that you can actually work people. Once you get them to their context, work them down into what they learn to believe about themselves, like I'm unlovable or whatever it is. is that, does that address your question? Yeah. OK. So, so just a comment on that. So mm -hmm. it sounds like the context is something that you're it's not like you get the context and then you start doing all this. It's, no. It sounds like the context is coming out. Always it, there. Okay. Yeah. L kind of you're, you're, you're ferreting it out as you're going through this process. Right. Yeah. It's At like the, the same time, if you're working with someone, you're always, already knowing some of their past history. And so you don't have to ferret it out just at this level. You've already been asking them those kinds of questions. They understand that it's significant in their relationships, right? So that's important, too. And what I love about this process is it really opens the heart. You know, we use it in our groups a lot when the group gets into a big knot or a couple of people in the group get bunged up and we could spend months processing it. <laughs> Instead, what we do is bring out the body knot, and you know the person's always holding the context. I saw this or heard this. I imagined that. 
this is what I felt. My impulse was to withdraw and just not talk in group anymore, right? And that relates to when I was a kid, this and this and this happened. Well, when the person who triggered them is listening to this, their heart opens. And this is what I love with couples is they start to see, oh, that's how my person got hurt, you know? And so it makes, it kind of forces people, which is why they don't like it, into taking responsibility for, you know, what their, what their, their part in this is and really taking ownership of it. And, and I gotta say, a lot of couples, as you know, fight that tooth and nail, <laughs> you know? Did Kitty, that address your question? Yeah. Kitty and I work with groups, too. Um, we work with a group, well, we have for five years, who are professional therapists, and they have a professional organization. And over the 15 years they worked together, they had some pretty big knots going on. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time they called us up and had us come in, we just started working the body knot with them. That's what we said we'd do. Every year when at the end of their um, time that we've been there is, they call us back. And they're getting so much closer and so much clearer. It's beautiful because they're sophisticated, they're therapists, and they really appreciate this help. Michael, did you have a question? Oh, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, one of the things I wanted to mention is that Teresa and I are getting more involved in going into organizations that are bunged up, I call it, but, you know, knotted, knotted up. up. And part of the reason we call it a knot is you're literally, it's like Twister. You know, you can get... <laughs> Um, I often lead it if it's people I don't know and there's not a lot of room for really going to the core wounds, which is pretty vulnerable, I'll work them standing so that they have to. What I love is that when somebody jumps to their assumption, they have to move. That's yeah. what makes it somatic. It's, no, no, you just moved. You have to stop and move, which helps them know that they did just move to another place in their mind, right? So... Um, <coughs> We also slow it way down. That's what people want to do. They want to speed it up. And when they have to go stand or sit on these different places, they slow it way down. If we see somebody who seems to be really caught in their context, we have them go back and sit in their context and look for where this particular sensitivity has come from. And that's actually where that core wound comes in. What did you never get when you were a child that is showing up in your relationships now, right? Okay. So shall we do the exercise or do you want to demo? I, I was, let's have them do the exercise. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. All right, so we want you guys to pair up, but first we'll explain the exercise that you're gonna do. And you have a sheet of paper with the instructions on it that was on the top of your body knot packet. Um, but we'll tell you what to do and we'll demonstrate it really quickly so that you know what to do, okay? So you're, we're going to pair up in pairs. There's going to be A and B, all right? It's over there. Um, somebody's looking for a packet. Anyway, um, A is going to observe. Is that how it's written now? I don't know. It's, I think it might be the opposite. So you, when you pick a partner, then you're going to decide who's A and who's B. B sits across from A and changes expressions and positions three to four times. So it's only body language, not story. So A is going to observe while B, so you're, she's A and I'm B, all right? Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell her what I see and what I imagine. When I see you standing like that with your legs apart, I'm going to describe the facts. With your legs apart, one hand on your hip, and no smile on your face. My fantasy is that you're angry with me. And then if we went a little further, I'd say, and that makes me feel 
scared and I want to withdraw, okay? So now she's going to switch. <laughs> well, now when I see you doing this, my fantasy is you're happy with me and I want to come forward. Yes. Got it? Okay. So, and it can be way more subtle than that. Way more subtle. <laughs> yeah. If we had a lot of time, a really interesting thing about this exercise is do it with two or three people. And you will find that from your context, certain people trigger certain events and effects in you. So one person who you feel really warm toward has more to do with this than what they're doing, right? Um, we don't have time. We wish we did. But you'll see that it's a very powerful exercise to help people see what they imagine and how that makes them would, withdraw or come towards someone else. Okay, so pair up, and then we want you to do it three times on each side. We'll tell you when to switch. And, and move your chairs or whatever so you have a little space. Say it again. Move your chairs or whatever to have some space. <laughs> it's hard to remember. It is, but I think it's going away. Yeah. How long? Let's watch them. Maybe not. 